you were dumped by a husband making $300,000 a year. Sorry, but suing won't do you any good. With that, my sister looked at me and grinned. I thought it was supposed to be my baby shower, but she didn't care at all. However, I couldn't stay silent after being told off like that. Do you think you can mess up someone's family and get away with it for free? Be prepared. I plan to demand a substantial amount of compensation from both you and my husband. When I glared at my sister, she even seemed to enjoy mocking me. Please do. You can take your compensation or whatever. I have a husband earning $300,000 a year. A compensation of $10,000 or $20,000 means nothing to us, right, dear? As Tiffany turned to my husband, he began to tremble violently. Then, as soon as our eyes met, he suddenly knelt down in a deep bow. I'm sorry. My sister was the most surprised by my husband's voice. Seizing the opportunity, I reached for something I had hidden in my pocket. When I attached it to the front of my shirt, my sister's face turned pale in an instant. My name's Wendy, and I'm 32 years old. I'm a working housewife, balancing both family and career. Four years have passed since I married Steve. Whether these four years have been long or short, I personally feel it's been quite a journey. The reason is that we were not blessed with children easily. Since the beginning of our marriage, we desired children. Having a warm family with children has always been one of my dreams. However, I struggled to conceive after we started our marital life. We went to the hospital for tests, but nothing abnormal was found. Contrary to the doctor's optimistic prognosis that you'll conceive eventually, we had to work hard on fertility treatments for a long time. Then, after four years, when I finally became pregnant, our joy was indescribable. Finally, a baby was coming to us. Rubbing my belly, we thanked God numerous times. Despite working full-time, I gradually reduced my workload to prepare for maternity leave. Despite the busyness of my daily tasks and the poignant feeling of letting go of work, my priority was undoubtedly my unborn child. Fortunately, together we had a considerable household income and had saved enough money. My husband assured me that he would work even harder from now on. True to his word, he seemed to be putting an extra 20% effort into his work. I was more worried about him overexerting himself than anything else. I took a leave of absence from work one month before my due date to prepare for childbirth at my parents' home. Initially, my husband, who dislikes being alone, was reluctant, but he gave in after I convinced him it was all for the child. I'll miss you, Wendy. While I found his attitude somewhat unreliable, it also endeared him to me and I resolved to fulfill my duty as a pregnant woman for his sake as well. That was when I stepped into my parents' house after a long time. Long time no see, Wendy. I was surprised to see my sister, Tiffany, at my parents' house. It had been almost 10 years since we last saw each other. Not only had I not seen her face, but I also didn't even know if she was alive. My parents were in the same situation. Tiffany had left home almost a decade ago, eloping with a man who was a former nightclub worker and unemployed at the time. Back then, my sister was deeply infatuated with the man, spending all the money she had earned on him and even dipping into our parents' funds leading to her disinheritance. For about 10 years, with not even a single message exchanged, I had no way to tell my sister about my marriage, let alone the pregnancy. Her sudden appearance at my parents' house surprised me and gave me a bad feeling. 
We were never close as sisters, and seeing her now, seemingly more hardened by the years, I felt a sense of revulsion. Wendy, are you pregnant by any chance? Your belly looks big. Yes, I'm almost at full term, but more importantly, what have you been up to, sis? You ran away from home like you were eloping and it's been 10 years. You didn't contact us even once. Well, I was disowned by our parents. They yelled at me to never show my face again. I had no choice but to stay away. That's because you took money from the house. I know, and I have repented. I told them I would pay back the money, so they allowed me to stay at home again. Maybe they still find their daughter dear to them. What about the men you were with? I broke up with them long ago, that penniless man. After eating through my savings, even made debts and cheated on me with another woman. Her face was almost dangerously lit up as she said this. It was not the face of the sister I knew. She had always been a sister of bad behavior, but meeting her after so long, her expression was worn down with a negative aura. I felt intimidated and couldn't say anything more. Let's put all that behind us. Let's get along as sisters from now on. I'll be living in this house from now on, so let's get along together. However, living at my parents' house, honestly, I only felt stressed. Of course, the cause was my sister. Despite her promise to get along, that promise was never kept. She lived selfishly, not caring about the family's life at all, especially as... A pregnant woman, I wished she had been more considerate. She was noisy, even late at night, and wouldn't get up in the morning, living a parasitic life of luxury at home without any shame. Yet, she showed no signs of remorse. Her rationale boiled down to one point. But I am working. It's different from Mandy, who is unemployed. She seemed to be working a dispatch job during the day and had promised our parents to pay them back. She seemed to feel that contributing financially to the household gave her a certain right and on the contrary, she had an aggressive attitude towards me, who was on leave. Being pregnant is just being unemployed and wasting resources, right? Just eating and sleeping and wandering around what i'm doing is necessary for the baby this is the most important time yeah yeah the pregnant lady is so great wendy you've always been such a cheater snorting disdainfully my sister glared at my large belly it seemed that she was displeased that our parents were paying more attention to me my worried mother once suggested to me Maybe you should explain to Tiffany that you were on leave. If she understood that you're working too, maybe her attitude would change. It's okay, mom. Whatever she thinks of me, it's just going to complicate things further. I want to focus only on giving birth. I'm just worried she might do something rash. I understood what my mother was saying, but I... I didn't want to exhaust myself over my sister any more than necessary. The baby would be born soon. I wanted to be a strong mother at all times. For that, I couldn't afford to be bothered by my sister's antics. One day, a week before the due date, my husband came to visit me at my parents' house. He looked uneasy, not being used to someone else's family home, but... He was dressed sharply in a suit. I had to laugh inwardly at my husband, who liked to show off. Nice to meet you. I am Tiffany, the sister. She approached my husband with a coquettish voice, dressed up more than usual for work. She usually didn't wear such heavy makeup or a dress with a revealing neckline. 
Seeing my husband clearly flustered, I instinctively stepped in. Sis, you have work, don't you? And my husband won't be staying long. Ah, oh, come on. I finally get to meet Steve. You should let us have a chat. Steve looks so handsome in his suit and seems so kind. He's nothing like my ex. Hey, don't bring up strange stories here, okay? And Steve, you're making a lot of money, right? I believe you're a lawyer or something. I've always admired smart people. Seeing the sparkle in her eyes, my husband didn't seem to mind at all. He blatantly let his gaze linger on her and even stared at her revealed cleavage. I was so appalled that I smacked my husband hard on his rear and sent him home right away. If seeing my face was all he needed, then his business here was done. Then I'll be heading to work too. As my sister left the house, following my husband, I felt a twinge of unease. But chasing after her wasn't an option. More than that, I felt overwhelmingly tired. Later, my mother told me that she had privately reprimanded my sister. You shouldn't berate your sister for being unemployed. After that, it seems she inadvertently let slip details about our household income and the nature of our jobs. Although she was vague, it was clear that to my sister, my husband appeared to be a reliable man. Looking back, I should have been more cautious at that moment than perhaps the painful events that followed could have been avoided. A week passed and I finally went into labor, enduring a day and night of agony. And when it was all over, I was left with an indescribable happiness. Although our much-abated baby was a bit small at 2.5 kilos, to me, she shone brighter than any gemstone. The only concern was that my husband couldn't make it in time for the birth. We had agreed that he would be there for the delivery, wanting him to witness the moment of our child's arrival. However, we arrived at the hospital an hour after the baby was born. When I pressed him on why he was late, he only replied with a terse, Sorry, I was caught up with work. Moments after his arrival, my sister showed up and I immediately sensed something was off. Could it be? Those two? After accomplishing the monumental task of giving birth, I realized I faced another issue that needed resolution. In the weeks that followed, I was incredibly active, carefully concealing my resentment. After the postpartum period, we decided to hold a celebration for the baby at my parents' house. We invited many people to the celebration, including my husband's parents and relatives. My sister also attended, inconspicuously dressed up for the occasion. She stuck to my husband's side, barely distinguishable from the guest of honor, and they exchanged meaningful glances which... I did not miss. I have something to tell everyone. As the celebration was in full swing, I stood up and spoke. The guests, their faces flushed from the alcohol, turned their attention to me. Though this is a joyous occasion, I have an important announcement. Today, I am divorcing my husband, Steve. The relatives' faces shout shock and only my parents, who had been briefed beforehand, looked sternly at my husband, who seemed completely bewildered. I continued with more detailed discussions. It's embarrassing to admit, but while I was struggling with pregnancy and childbirth, my husband was unfaithful. 
I have obtained the evidence from a detective agency. I will show you photos of my husband entering a hotel with another woman and kissing her in the street late at night. And unsurprisingly, the woman he was unfaithful with is my own sister, Tiffany. With that, all eyes turned to my sister, who was still clinging to my husband. Her presence alone seemed to admit her guilt, yet she laughed without any sign of remorse. Wendy, you're quite bold, aren't you? Exposing your own shame in front of the relatives. My husband was stolen right after giving birth. What a disgrace that will last generations. I wanted you to realize the consequences of your betrayal. Betrayal sounds so harsh. Steve and I simply fell in love. No one can fault an act of love. How dare you say that? You slept with my husband and I'll never forget how both of you visited the hospital room at the same time after I gave birth. Correct? I thought I'd admit it since it's so pitiful. Yes, while Wendy was giving birth, we were making love in a nearby hotel. Sorry, Wendy, that we were making a baby while you were giving birth to one. Sis, what kind of person are you? What? I'm just admitting what you wanted. Wendy, you were abandoned by a husband earning $300,000 a year. Tiffany laughed triumphantly, taking a swig of her beer as if to celebrate. The relatives around them were too stunned to speak. Unperturbed by their actions, Tiffany continued. Frankly, I couldn't stand the thought of a kid like Vandy being with a high earner like him. On the other hand, I'm beautiful and a grown woman. It's only natural for Steve to be drawn to me. He even said in bed that he was confident in his life with his wife. I don't want to hear about your affair. What? Jealous of me? Things will be tough for Wendy now. Being a single mother and raising a baby, it's truly sad for the child. Having no father because of the mother's selfishness. Sis, be prepared. I intend to demand a significant amount of compensation from both you and my husband. I won't show any mercy. I'll make sure you both face the consequences according to the law. Go ahead, ask for whatever compensation. With a husband earning $300,000 a year, $10,000 or $20,000 in compensation means nothing to us. Right, Steve? As Tiffany called out to my husband with a seductive tone, he was next to her, his face pale, and his hands trembling. Tiffany called out to Steve with a puzzled tone, but he showed no reaction. Then, upon making eye contact with me, he suddenly knelt down, bowing deeply and shouting, I am sorry. Tiffany, who had been confidently attacking me, was the most shocked. What are you doing, Steve? Why suddenly kneel down? I have no choice but to apologize. Come on, be serious. You said to leave it to you if it comes to dealing with your wife. I'm a lawyer. Ready for a lawsuit or anything. I trusted you completely, Steve. It was all lies, just empty talk. My time with Tiffany was meant to be just a fling. As Tiffany was stunned into silence... I decided to reveal my trump card. I pulled a badge from my jacket pocket and attached it to the front of my shirt for all to see. The badge featured a design of scales representing justice. Is that? Realizing the significance of the badge, Tiffany finally understood. Yes, this badge is only worn by those who are licensed lawyers. But Wendy, you were supposed to be unemployed. Whatever misconceptions 
you had about me being unemployed. As you can see, I'm a lawyer currently on leave. Once childcare settles down, I fully intend to return to work. So the three hundred thousand dollars income was that was my salary before taking leave. What did my husband tell you? That he was a high-earning liar? That was just to impress you, targeting your body. My husband is just a paralegal, a clerical worker in a law firm. Steve and I were colleagues who married despite the income and position disparity. I always tried not to judge others based on income or status. Please, Wendy, forgive me. It was just a moment of vagueness after you went to your parents' house, and I was lonely. To think you chose my sister as your affair partner, flattered by being called a liar, you had your fun. So it's only fair you face the consequences. We will divorce, and I'll make sure to get a substantial compensation. Knowing I specialize in divorce cases, so sis, feel free to marry him or turn him into your gigolo as you please. I've lost all interest in him, but make sure you pay the compensation. Spare me, I can't afford it. I'm still dealing with debt from my previous boyfriend. I have already filed the lawsuit in court. Wait with bated breath. That's all. With those words, I left the room. Sometime after that, I officially completed my divorce from my husband. He was reluctant until the end, but when I hinted at the possibility of raising the amount of compensation, finally signed the divorce papers in tears. Of course, he knew all too well how capable a lawyer I am, especially when it came to court proceedings. Burdened with a substantial amount of compensation, it seems my husband is having a tough time. Naturally, he was fired from the law firm. A man who indulges in an affair during his wife's childbirth is, understandably, unwelcome in any law firm. I hope he reflects on his actions and lives more honorably from now on. As for my sister Tiffany. She was also kicked out of the house and is now wandering the streets, having already broken up with Steve. I knew most of the situation because my sister kept calling me. According to her, she was deceived and is the victim. Feeling a bit sorry for her, I referred her to a law firm. If her claim is legitimate, surely a competent lawyer will offer help. However. I doubted she could afford the legal fees. I have returned to my job, working as diligently as before. Back home, I take care of my beloved daughter. With my parents' help, my life is going smoothly. We're planning to go to a slightly upscale restaurant for my daughter's first solid food celebration. Discussing with my parents. Thanks to the compensation for my husband and sister, we can afford to splurge quite a bit. I'm thoroughly enjoying every moment of my daughter's growth.